When that happens, it's called geometric dilution of position, and it means that although you get a good fix from a bunch of satellites, you can't get very good accuracy because they're all close together. Incidentally, people in the Air Force can um, contact Space Command, run the giant program, and they'll tell you the best times for precision. And there are, it are there have always been the, the theory of jamming or spoofing of GPS systems. In the last couple of years, there have been laboratory tests and now field tests, not just of jamming, which is obvious, but spoofing, very specific spoofing where they can simply reset your position by a, not just an arbitrary amount, but a very specific amount. Um, the demonstrations have involved um, theoretical grounding of ships, for example, in particular straits, where they could offset the location a specific, a specific distance in a specific range. They did this, this has been demonstrated, so it's only a matter of time until it is used operationally and lives are lost and so forth. They are working on systems, of course, to, um, if not counteract that, at least make it more clear what's happening. But we'll talk a little bit more about using GPS as part of your navigational suite later. GPS is also not a perfect tool in the overall scheme of what navigation systems are, because it's not freestanding. It requires satellites and radio. The ideal navigation system is has got the precision, ease of use, and repeatability of GPS, but it doesn't require external sources. If all the satellites are shot down or you're in a sandstorm, it's not a very good navigational tool. Um, it can be removed. Now, obviously, Department of Defense doesn't think that this is a, it is an impermanent thing because they control selective availability, and in theory, following a presidential directive uh, that uh, President Clinton, I believe, signed, they're not supposed to use selective availability, but the technical system, it, the technical capability is still exists within the United States government. And there are, by the way, real similar systems. Pretty much everything I'm telling you relates to the Chinese compass system, if ever, it ever launches fully, and the Russian, formerly Soviet, GLONASS, if it goes up, and, of course, Galileo, when it goes completely operational someday. That's why those all exist. It's not just it's uh, because of uh, not just national pride, but the fact, the theory that the U.S. could shut down stuff if they wanted to. And we already mentioned jamming and spoofing. A key problem with pretty much any, well, any navigational system, but especially electronic ones, is precision versus accuracy. A precise rifle has good groups, but an accurate one is hitting the target. Accuracy is paramount. GPSs in fact, we can probably use this one to be clear about things. This will come up. And the screen's being a little dark, but you get the gist of things. It's a Google map. And what we've got is a dot here saying we are at this exact location in the world. Now they are slowly getting better and you'll notice the dot actually has a uh, radius to it. That is the actual location. There are lots of these systems that give you an exact pinpoint or even a set of crosshairs at all times. Let's look at what happens if we turn off the GPS signal. You can still get in the mapping program in these things. What's happened is Google is nice enough to have given us this pale blue circle around here. They don't really tell us what it means. And what that is, that's the circular error probability. Pro probably, and this is using a different system, I know. This is a triangulation or cell sector. But still, the same principle applies. The, the precision is reduced but they believe the accuracy is good enough that they can assume you're still within this circle. They have accuracy, and you're probably, based on math, near the center of the circle even, but they can only guarantee you're somewhere inside the circle.
good GPS units will give you the accuracy in numbers, no less. And you need to look at that. You can even get programs that do that for things like your mobile phone. And if we turn the GPS back on and go to this this particular boring program, which I'm not, you know, advocating, I'm just using as an example, it shows you all the stuff you'd expect, a bunch of things on the map, but the error in meters. We're at 96 and dropping because it's slowly acquiring satellites, 64, and so forth. This, by the way, is the exact same uh, display as we were seeing on the uh, Garmin unit before. We have the circle, 33, 66, straight north. The satellites are each little dots, and the degree, the signal is down here. I have no idea what yellow versus green means on this thing. You have to know your accuracy, and you have to use that when you're navigating. So. If you were to cast your mind back to the other basic navigational tools, for example, you want to set your position using the MGRS system. So, might be 518, sorry, anyway, 551878, we messed that up. That gets you to this grid square. Well, the GPS insists on giving you the full resolution, and they always all do this. It gives you the full resolution of the system. This gives you one meter precision. Or, I have no idea what, because lat long is a silly system, but three decimal places of precision. So, one meter precision. But in fact, you know, you're looking right there, it has 22 feet. When you're rec reporting locations, you should never, ever just read off what's on the GPS. You need to think about it first. First and foremost. There's more to it, but first and foremost, you need to think about it. And I would say, at 22 feet, you should drop the last digit, so you're only giving 10 meter accuracy. At least. Or maybe it doesn't matter. They don't care. They only want to know where you are within a grid square, and you should only give them 100 meter, 100 or 1,000 meter accuracy. So think about what you're doing, and that's the beginning of having a good navigational mindset. Don't blindly follow the electronics and assume that they know what they're talking about. Which leads directly to this. GPS is a supplemental navigational tool. Don't use it as a crutch. You can, yes, in these modern days of advanced land warrior or so forth, you will, tend, you will start using this as your primary navigational tool instead of a supplemental one. But you have to be able to use your other tools your compass, distance measuring equipment as simple as pace count deeds. You need to be able to use terrain association to figure out where you are. Let's say the GPS says I'm at a particular location, whether it's on a digital map or you look up the, re the grid reference and you look it up here. It says I'm over here, but it does that when I'm driving down a road. Well, something's clearly wrong. And this happens all the time. This is not just a dawn of the system or Soviet nuclear attack kind of problem. And it isn't always just that I'm driving down this gravel road and it says I'm over here and you can figure it out. Uh, a few weeks ago, my this particular unit, in fact, insisted I was in the middle of a park in uh, Montana for about six hours. This was kind of inconvenient because I hadn't planned ahead well enough, and I was driving down roads trying to get home using that as my primary navigational tool. 